So this is one of my experimental interplants for this year. And what I've tried to achieve here is to kind of make growing onions more cost effective. And I've looked to achieve that by interplanting them into a lettuce bed. And the lettuce bed is a second planting already. So this bed's had two uh, crops out of it so far this year. And then we'll have the onions out of it. And the key, I think, to the timing of this is that when the onions are planted and the lettuce are planted back in April, uh, the onions need to be reasonably good sized so that they can kind of compete with the lettuces. And then the lettuces really need to come out by mid-May. Now, it's the end of May right now and really the lettuces should have come out two weeks ago that would have just given the onions a little bit more chance to size up but as it happens i think they're going to be okay they might not be the biggest onions in the world but i think they'll be fine now i'm going to have a go at this bed see if i can bring it back into some semblance of order see if i can pull those peas back a touch and clear that old spinach out and uh, just give this little bed a weed oh, well that's a bit more manageable so let's get this spinach out. I'm just going to twist it out. You do leave some of the roots in when you do this, which is good. Um, but you don't leave everything in, which makes replanting a bit easier. This spinach has been awful. I think it's trumpet and I planted it out in December and it just it was just before that really cold snap that we had and as a result it just never it never thrived and it just sat there for months and months and all the other spinach was like romping away like crazy even though it was only two or three weeks older um, and even spinach that was younger has kind of been and gone a long time ago uh, and it just shows you you know how you can really knock a plant back by um, you know exposing it to unfavorable conditions early on in its life so this is my fourth bucket of greens today I'm just turning it into my current compost bin and this compost coming on really nicely now so I'm very happy with it I'm confusing the worms a bit because I keep cycling it between cool and warm the worms come in when it cools down a bit and then I drive them all out again when it heats up again but other than that it's a good way to make lovely compost I started to pick my cauliflowers now so I'm just taking the cauliflower tops off and getting those in the compost I'll leave the roots in until I clear the bed so I've got three cauliflowers left in this bed and in the calabrese bed I'm leaving these in if there's any potential for side shoots but I'm taking off the worst leaves that are infested with cabbage aphid and obviously I'm not going to be eating things like that and in the end, actually, I've decided there's nothing worth saving in this bed because the side shoots are still small. I think they're just all going to end up infested with cabbage aphid before they actually go anywhere. And, you know, there's not much time. This bed's going to be replanted next week or the week after anyway. So, yeah, best to be decisive in gardening. So at this time of year... I'm kind of turning these compost bins maybe every two weeks and it always amazes me you know that there's hardly any evidence of any of these greens that I have mixed into these bins after just two weeks <laughs> they've all gone and it's all kind of just lovely black gold yeah, it's amazing 
so I'm just taking out these early sprouts and uh, <laughs> they're a bit earlier than I'd hoped for really. <laughs> Look at these little sprouts. <laughs> I'll be eating those in my tea tonight because I love sprouts. But um, yeah, they're meant to look like these over here, which are looking really nice. And these will be ready in sort of July time, hopefully. Um, but yeah, these just uh, went to seed earlier than I'd hoped for. It's very variety specific, you know, so these are fiddle basket and they just seem to really take ages to run to seed. Whereas these were breast and these went to seed really quickly. So these don't work as an early sprout variety unless you want them really early. So I need to give this bed a good firm down. It's very loose and soft after taking those brassica roots out. And they were huge root systems, <laughs> absolutely colossal. And uh, I often leave them in, but they were just too big and in the way because the bed was really intensively planted. Anyway, that's much better. i just level this off now because there's nothing worse than a bed that's not level in summer. You just get so many wet spots and dry spots. And obviously we don't mind wet spots in summer, but dry spots are a real pain. Just get some of my homemade compost. It's not bad this. I mean, it, it's not the best, but it's good enough for a spare and kind of bonus planting of something. So things like Calabrese, we don't really have space for these for a summer harvest. Um, and so it's kind of nice when something goes wrong. And we, you know, these are the sorts of things we have as spares, things that we would kind of like to grow, but kind of can't justify growing um, all year round. We're just right now harvesting loads of calabrese because we have loads of space in spring. But as we uh, approach kind of peak planting time for the winter crops, we, uh, we start running out of space. So yeah, that's a nice bonus. Yeah, there's not many plants you can get a harvest from in that kind of, in this sort of window from June to August. Calabrese is a nice fast one. So, these pots are too big for those holes. So, what I tend to do is just use the hole as my kind of start point and then just make a hole with the pot. Dig it out a little bit deeper, take the two bottom leaves off to leave the plant like that. Work it out. Oh, that's a pretty good plant. Quite happy with that. Please, I'm planting it out now though, because it's certainly ready. I'll do another one. Two bottom leaves off. You don't always, you know, it's not like a rule that you've got to take the two bottom leaves off, but that just gives it reasonable results. This is a cheap multi purpose compost that I bought, and I thought I'd try it out with these brassicas. I'm happy, they've grown really nicely. They're 15 to the fourth, so six weeks old. Quite nice. Right, I'll get on with those. 
I always treat this bed very much as a bonus, as pea bed. You know, sometimes you can't really grow very much in it because of the shade from the peas. But it's worth a go. I'm just going to pop some turnips and lettuce in it. And the <laughs> turnips are looking really rough. But uh, anyway, it's worth a go. These lattices, by contrast, they're not looking too bad. Got most of them planted already. So, they should be okay. So I'm planting my squash today. I've already planted a few of them. And so these are the plants and they're only in a six cell tray. I don't want to pot them on because I'm too busy at the moment. So I'm going to plant them out and hope for the best because it is a bit too cold for them at night. But I've also planted out already my uh, courgettes and they're doing fine. In fact, they've doubled in size in the last week. And I planted out the first batch of squash as well, and they're doing fine as well. So my idea is that I'm planting them deep underneath this wood chip path. So the path is sort of three or four inches deep, something like that. Um, and yeah, and I'm just putting these halos, which are used for tomatoes, and I'm putting those around the plants so that I can kind of retain the wood chip so it doesn't all sort of fill the hole up and also so I can put these little spikes that are at the bottom of the halo and put those into the soil so uh, you can see maybe hopefully you can see these little spikes so hopefully that's going to kind of make sure that all the water goes deep down into the into the soil into the root zone of the squash so it's a little bit fiddly with the plants being so small but it's not really that fiddly just popping it in and there we go we've got the first few leaves we just have to keep an eye on the bottom down here to make sure there's no flowers growing um, and if there are then obviously you want to pinch those off and then there's loads of options for protecting them so you could just lay a bit of fleece over them like that but I'm not actually going to do that I'm going to use these pots and I'm just going to pop a pot over like that and I think that will keep them really nice and toasty and then down the edge of my plot here in this what used to be the fence I've put crown prints at the far end then two sweet dumpling and then the rest are crown prints down here so they're all safe and sound under the buckets uh, it just means a trip to the allotment every morning on my bike to take those off, but that's actually quite a bonus. So it's the end of the gardening week. Got a few other bits done. Picked the uh, overwintered onions out of the asparagus bed. Picked the last of the cauliflowers out of this bed and put the melons in and also put some beetroot in just down the edge there in both beds. And this coal frame off the early potatoes and that will be going over here and uh, more melons will be going in here in a week's time. It looks like there's some pretty nice cauliflowers in that bed as well. Harvested the onions from that little bed and put a courgette in there. At the moment I'm covering the courgettes that haven't been really well hardened off with buckets like that. Obviously the onions from these beds and put the ochre in. That is it, that is all the ochre 
tubers that I managed to save from last year. So not very many, but I'm not growing as much ochre obviously this year, but going forward, I'm not growing as much ochre um, because we only really use it as a radish substitute in winter and we don't need that much of it because we do get pretty early radishes here. And more onions harvested there and that is New Zealand spinach. And I finally took the covers off the early red cabbages. And all these at this end are starting to heart up now. So I'm gonna start picking these quite small because obviously we've got a lot to get through between now and the end of July. And I've moved lots of stuff out of the polytunnel down here. So some of the early tomatoes and some of the squashes and things that I'm hardening off. I just, uh, I can't be bothered with watering them in the polytunnel now. So some of the squashes that I planted out a week ago, like these are doing okay. And I'm going to leave these now without the nets on, just like I'm leaving these courgettes without the fleece on. So I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to sign off now and go do the harvest. Oh, and we got the first tomato. <laughs> One measly little tomato. Well, it's finally summer and it looks like it too. We are starting to get a few summer things. So uh, no, no tomatoes, unfortunately. I'm still getting the tomatoes from the supermarket. We do have tomatoes, but you know, like four or five a day or something like that. So nowhere near enough. And right, so Pak Choi, no, not Pak Choi, that one is Joy Choi, uh, celery, actually a bit of leaf miner damage on that one, unfortunately. Uh, we are starting to get a bit of leaf miner around. We've got some on the spinach and some on the beets and things like that. Anyway, at the back there, we've got spinach, double deckered, and rhubarb, of course and beetroots, and I'm picking, I'm starting to clear in some of my old beetroot beds. So I'm picking all these little tiny tiddlers uh, just to get them out of the way. Uh, they probably won't size up before I need the bed for something else. So um, nice beetroot leaves, golden beetroot leaves, which are even nicer. Uh, that is the last of the calabrese. And we've got just a few calabrese side shoots, but again, that's the last of the calabrese side shoots. Um, abundant peas, we must have picked, I don't know, another two containers during the week and we're on about six courgettes a week at the moment from the plants that we've got, but that'll pick up soon. Um, I've only got one bed of turnips and it's not quite ready left. And then we won't have turnips anymore because it's summer. Turnips don't taste great in summer. Um, carrots. I'm starting to pick a few more carrots now, but I'm still being cautious because, you know, it, we've only got a few containers full and I'm waiting for the ones in the ground to be ready. Asparagus mostly gets eaten each day, so we haven't got very much of that uh, on show here. Uh, broad beans, obviously, really lovely. And, yeah, finally, I mean, I've been eating strawberries since the beginning of May, but finally got enough strawberries to actually bring home and give to the grandkids and friends and things so uh, yeah it's nice to have a few strawberries uh what have we got green garlic that's coming to an end soon but of course you know mature garlic will be ready then and more yeah that's more garlic actually some of this is clo yeah you can see the clothes now i think that's from the polytunnel that stuff there and that's just from the green garlic pots. Um, yeah, better kale, really nice kale. And cauliflowers. So we had cauliflowers last week. We've got cauliflowers again this week. We'll have cauliflowers uh, next week. And yeah, some of them, you know, I'm clearing beds, um, planting melons and courgettes and things. So some of the... Uh, Cauliflowers don't get time to size up, but still cute. Finally picked all of the onion, the early onions. So uh, they're drying now. 
Um, yeah, just new potatoes, two seeds to get that pot. So that's, I think that's reasonable for this time of year. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. <coughs> and then the salad mixes. And we've got loads of different types of lettuce in here. Obviously, we've got the salad carrots. We've got the salad onions. Actually, these salad onions are not the bunching onion type. They're just thinnings from the Red Baron main crop onions. So I sowed four seeds per module to give me a density, um, a target density of 70 per square meter. And all four germinated, so that would give me a density of 100. And my sandy soil can't quite support 100 onions per square meter. So thinned them out. And the green onion tops and yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for the salads. Hopefully we'll have a lot more salad ingredients soon, but for now it's mainly lettuce and onions. So uh, yeah, that's the table. Pretty nice. Quite happy with that. So anyway, hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And I'll see you soon.